Okay, hi there. Welcome to this Let's Play series. Uh, I'm Little T, and this is Stationeers. And if you are unfamiliar with the game, it's uh, a sandbox game where you get to build uh, your own base on the moon, on Mars, on Europa, and other uh, objects, real and imaginary, in, in the solar system. And I, I put in about a thousand hours into this game, so I figured it was about time that I did some kind of let's play. Um, so this video, or this series of videos rather, is, is not going to be strictly speaking a tutorial, uh, but I will be explaining certain concepts uh, and um, mechanics as they appear, right? So uh, if you are new to the game or, you know, you, you, you haven't been playing that long, then hopefully it should be possible for you to follow along with me, right? So I'm just going to hit new game here and load up the moon. Uh, now, if you want to uh, follow along but on Mars, that's perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, if you really want to do that, then that's okay. Um, Essentially because the conditions are not too different, right? Um, you know, the, the, the moon is uh, a vacuum um, that only has uh, a tiny bit of warmth coming from the sun. Uh, and Mars has a, a, a little bit of atmosphere that will give you some gases to work with as you go along, right? Um, so apart from that, you know, I mean, the solar energy is slightly lower on Mars than it is on, on the Moon. Um, and the horizontal angle of the Sun as it goes overhead um, is, is ever so slightly off um, from, from the meridian, I guess. Uh, so on the Moon, you know, it goes directly overhead, right, uh, with zero degrees to the left or the right. Uh, and on Mars, depending on your orientation, it's, it's going to be like eight degrees offset from uh, from where you're standing, right? Um, I'll kind of explain why that's relevant later, uh, but for now, let's get into creating this world. Um, and one of the first things that we're going to have to do is get some kind of power network uh, up and running, right? Because in Station Ears, you cannot do anything at all unless you have um, access to a reliable power source. Um, so if we're, we're talking about like, you know, the, the pyramid of basic needs, right? Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's an image somewhere if you, if you Google it, um, the, the stationeer's pyramid of basic needs. Um, at the bottom of that pyramid is power, right? Because um, if you don't have power, then your suit battery runs out if your suit battery runs out, then you die. Um, and if you don't have power, then you can't uh, build things. And if you can't build things, then you know you don't get food, so you die. Uh, you get the picture, right? So um, right off the bat, what we're going to do is uh, just have a, a, a quick check in our suit. We're going to hit the three key. Uh, and what we want to do is just lower down the target internal pressure uh, to around about uh, 21, 22, um, just to conserve a little bit of uh, energy um, uh, so that we can last longer with this battery before we have to change it, right? So that'll give us extra time to get this power network set up and running. Uh, we're going to change the temperature down here to, to uh, around about 12 degrees um, just because uh, we can survive in that kind of environment. And bear that in mind, right, when you finally end up um, putting together an atmosphere, uh, an area with atmosphere, um, then, uh, you know, bear that in mind, right, that you can survive in an area has that kind of pressure and that kind of temperature. Right? Um, so first off, we've, we've hit J to use the backpack, and we are using the WASD keys to navigate. Um, 
So we want to move down with the jetpack and we use the left control key. Um, so right off the bat, we're going to open up these crates. Um, not going to go into too much detail about what is inside here uh, until it becomes relevant. Um, but yeah, one of the first things that we want to take out of here are some uh, iron frames, right? Uh, and if you look down, uh, hold down the Alt key and look down here at your, uh, uh, your hands, the active hand is our left empty hand, right? And what we want to do is have this duct tape in our active hand. So we're going to let go of the Alt key, press E to change hands, and then we're just going to left click to swap these iron frames out for this duct tape, right? Um, so we're going to kind of look for a, a reasonably flat area. And on the moon, most areas are reasonably flat. Uh, so we're just going to drop here by hitting the J key, turning our jetpack off. Um, and we're just going to start by right clicking, um, laying down like a four by four um, starting area. Um, just so that we can put down uh, various uh, machines that we use to um, um, build more things that we're going to need uh, and also to to set up our solar panel network right um, okay so with these frames um, frames are one of a few things in the game that can be placed absolutely anywhere right just go over here and, and demonstrate that right so like, I could put it up right up here in the sky um, and it doesn't need to have any kind of support right um, most things in the game that you construct need to have um, a frame or a wall constructed underneath or, or like as the surface to which you attach it right so what we need now are some iron sheets um, and what we're going to do with these is fill out these frames, right? So hit, I'm going to hit the E key. I'm going to hit the 6 key to open my tool belt and use the mouse wheel to navigate around my tool belt. And I hit the F key to put the welder in my hand. And I'm going to turn it on and start filling out these uh, frames, okay? So what I'm doing is constructing these frames to one of the two levels that you can construct them to um, because empty frames uh, you know things just fall through them and uh, you can't really construct anything on them I mean you can construct things on the seams here but um, you know if you want to have like a decent surface then you've got to fill out all the frames right um, if you want to make them airtight uh, as well as constructible um, or a construction surface then uh, you you do the same thing like twice right so you construct once and then you construct again and that makes the frames airtight right um, so I'm just gonna fill out these here and um, then we're done I'm gonna hit O to turn off my uh, welder and then uh, now I'm gonna hold down the alt key and drag the welding torch back into my tool belt right so that's alternative way that you can um, uh, move things around in your inventory um, and you know you can also if you if you drop things right you drag them and you drop them um, so yeah you can also hold down the Q key to throw things um, or tap it just to drop things in, in, in where you are right so okay um, let's uh, find where, where we need to put this okay so what we need now is the basic solar panel um, and remember we right click to place something uh, and at the moment you see it's red right because this is one of those things that cannot be placed anywhere right so we have this empty frame here so I can't place this solar panel here because it needs to have uh, a constructed frame right um, so as it is it is oriented as where I want it to be um, but if you want to change the art okay so we can go a little bit out over the edge here right? anyway so it's oriented as to where I want it to be uh, but if you press the C key you can change the orientation of, of uh, most things right um, be they cables or um, 
solar panels or power controllers, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, and you can also use uh, the mouse wheel to change what model or what type of uh, this object uh, you're going to place down, right? Um, so these solar panels are basic solar panels, which means that they they don't um, they don't move, right? You can't uh, orient them to face the sun. Um, and actually, do you know what? Uh, it's because the sun is going to go overhead um, in a in a straight line. Uh, this solar panel is in fact not oriented uh, how I want it to be, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, scroll or alt drag uh, the screwdriver into my hand and then hold down uh, the key there to deconstruct it. And if I have an empty hand, it will go into my hand. Otherwise, it will fall to the floor as a, as a kit, um, which is the... the the, the packed up state that you see it in my hand, right? So I'm going to just place this down again because what I want to do is have the power cable coming out of this side of the solar panel, um, and you'll you'll kind of see why I want to do that um, in, a, in a bit, right? So um, now we have the solar panel down, but it's not going to take any um, any energy from the sun here without a um, a glass sheet, right? So you, you need to, um, there's a second stage of construction here, right? So we got to put in this glass sheet. Um, and then once that is done, um, I'm going to scroll around my, my tool belt again and pull out some cables, right? So cables, again, you press C to orient the cables to where you want them. You can use this, the, the mouse wheel to scroll through the different types of cables connections that you, you need um, and just briefly the straight and corners use one cable and the junctions use two cables right so whether it's uh, 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 unless something has changed in a, in, a, in a patch in the last couple of days um, a, a cable junction like this or a four-way six-way whatever um, will use two cables right so um, for some reason, whenever I get around to laying down my first solar panel, the uh, the sun always goes down. So um, say what you want about that, right? So okay, we're going to lay down this cable here, okay? And you'll see that if it can connect to something, the um, the silhouette will go from green, meaning I can place it, to yellow, meaning that I can place it, and it is going to connect to a thing that it's supposed to connect to, right? So here we go. We're going to lay that down. We're just going to lay, for the moment, just, just one um, piece of cable here. Um, and we're going to connect it now to a power controller, right? So what we've got to do with these power controllers, uh, let's swap that for the, uh, the, um, uh, the glass sheets there. Um, so these power controllers uh, basically isolate um, a power network, right? Um, later on, we're going to be changing this to a, a larger kind of a battery, um, just to um, to store more power, right? Um, but I'll, I'll get to that when it uh, when it happens, right? So I'm going to orient it. Um, now you'll see here that uh, on one side, on the left hand side here, there is uh, an arrow facing away from the power controller with a power symbol next to it. Uh, and what that basically means is that that is the power output of this power controller, right? So as it stands right now, if I were to construct this, uh, power would come in from the solar panel, go along the cable, and into uh, the power controller um, where you see that input arrow, right? Now, if uh, I am, let's say I... I I do it from this angle, right? Um, now it's it's oriented the wrong way, right? Because the output is going to the solar panel, which is the source of, of power rather than you know what is going to consume it, right? So if I end up in this situation, I just use the mouse wheel to change the orientation of the input and output, and then I can place it down, right? Um, so that's groovy. 
Um, and a power controller can be used without a battery inside it. Um, so th there's no need necessarily to, um, to place a battery inside a power controller. Uh, but I, I like to do it because it just gives you that little extra moment of uh, um, security in terms of your power, right? Because the battery acts like a kind of um, emergency backup in the case that there's no, no power coming to the, um, uh, the power controller from something like a solar panel, right? And with certain parts of the game, uh, you, you, will, you will need to have a battery in it um, because you know, the, the whatever it is is gonna need to function during the night, for example, right? Um, so I'm gonna hit J here to, to deactivate my jetpack. And what I have in my left hand here is an arc furnace, right? And what this is, is a basic resource converter, right? So when we go out mining shortly, um, we're gonna collect ore, um, and we're gonna put it into this machine. And I think, once again, uh, yeah, I've put this down the wrong way. So um, we're going to go out, we're going to mine ore, we're going to put ore into this arc furnace, right? Which, again, I'm, I'm moving around with the C key. Um, and you'll see here that it has a data input, output, and a power input, right? Um, so I'm going to just place this, like, uh, here. Um, now, this is the input. Right, we're going to put the ore in here and it's going to pop out here as like refined ore, right, in the form of ingots. Um, and so what we're going to do is just cable up this uh, arc furnace, right? Um, yeah, so you know, cables you have to lay one at a time, which, um, if I'm honest, is, is a little time consuming. Uh, I, I would very much like it if the, if the devs um, would give us the, the possibility to kind of like draw a line, you know, um, and then if we have the cable, you know, um, it would it would place down um, all of this cable all in one. Um, but you know, it's fine as it is, right? It's, uh, it's uh, it would just be a nice quality of life change, right? So um, okay, so we have this connected up, right? But as you can see. Uh, the solar panel is generating no power, so no power is going into the area power controller. And so when I hit on on the arc furnace, right, this light does not uh, come on, right. So um, right now this is you know basically a bunch of useless uh, <laughs> useless equipment um, until the um, um, the sun comes up start shining light on this solar panel so uh, we have our arc furnace plugged in um, now this here is a battery so um, you'll see in my suit here right my battery is now at 67 percent um, so what I'm gonna do is swap this the battery in my suit using again the mouse wheel to scroll through um, my my inventory panels um, and just hit the F key to swap what is in my hand to what I have selected there in my suit, right? Um, now, to open this, we're going to use a crowbar, uh, right? So we're going to hit the left or hold down the left mouse button to open that. I'm going to pop that battery in there, right? And at the moment, it's off, right? When, uh, you know, at the moment, it's off. It seems kind of counterintuitive like this, I have to say, but, you know, whatever. So there it is, it's on now, right? And so you'll see, now that the, there is a battery in there, we have power to the arc furnace, right? So I'm just gonna turn that off. Uh, I'm gonna leave this open because we're gonna be changing this battery out um, for the time being um, reasonably often. So, um, so yeah. So the next thing we're gonna wanna put down is a auto lathe, uh, which is our first industrial machine. Uh, let's just hit E and put that crowbar back into our tuba. Um, so what this machine will do is produce kind of basic uh, manufacturing um, uh, 
some stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> so you'll see it has an input on the left here and an output on the right, and at the front you'll have a data input, output, and a power input. Um, so uh, I like to space these kind of like uh, two or three spaces apart from um, other machines. Oh, and what happened there? I didn't fill in that frame or that one. Well, that shows me up, right? So, okay, you'll see here that the auto lathe uh, requires a little bit more uh, further construction than the arc furnace, which just came out and you, know, you plop it down and that's that. Um, but this auto lathe requires a welding torch, which we have here in our tool belt, and uh, iron sheets, right? And it said we need two. So let's go back over here and get those iron sheets And to be honest, what we're going to need to do, I'm going to hit four now to open my backpack. Um, and I'm not going to use the solar panel, so I'm going to click and drag, alt click and drag this into uh, this crate. I'm uh, probably not going to use the medical pill um, for a while, if at all. Um, and then I'm going to just drag these plastic sheets into my bag because I know that part of the construction process for this auto lathe is to use um, plastic sheets as well as um, uh, iron sheets. And while we're here, I think we'll just fill out these um, these two um, frames that I missed, right? Uh, and then we'll just weld here. Now, it's asking me for four cable coils, so I have those. Uh, and then it's asking me again for these um, um, plastic sheets, right? So um, there we go, and let's turn that off. And the final step here is to um, finish it off with a screwdriver. Okay, so um, now I'm not going to worry about the data here because um, it's not really within the scope of this video or indeed this series, I don't think. Um, I may come to uh, how to use data and, you know, um, I might experiment with that uh, at some point later. But right now, uh, what I really just need to do is connect this up to the power grid. And I, every time I hit the middle mouse button, uh, this happens. So. I think what that is is a ping, right? I, I don't know really what it is. Um, I, I'm guessing it's a ping. Um, but um, if somebody can tell me in the comments uh, what that is, uh, if I'm right or you know whatever it is, then that would be much appreciated, right? So um, yes, I'm going to need to uh, connect up this uh, arc furnace, right? Uh, sorry, the auto lathe. Uh, and I'm going to scroll through to um, get to the cable here and I'm just going to press C to uh, snap it to the nearest thing that it can connect to. Right? It doesn't always connect to exactly where you want it to do. Um, but in this case, because there's only one thing it can connect to, it will snap uh, directly to um, the, the, um, the correct orientation. Right, so we're going to just lay down some cable here, scrolling again to change uh, the cable I have. Um, and then we're going to just lead this over here uh, so that it's connected to the same uh, power grid here. Right? Now, uh, you'll see here that it is uh, this cable is in red, right? Um, which means that uh, I cannot place it down. Right? So um, what I'm going to have to do is uh, hold down the left alt key drag my wire cutters into my hand, uh, change back to the, the cables, and then just hit C until it is where it's supposed to be, right? So then we have this connected, okay? And so um, now if I hit the on switch, it should turn on, right? Um, now this is now generating power, right? So then as this imagine right like red is cool and uh, sorry red is bad and green is cool um, so um, very quickly uh, batteries have uh, a number of states uh, if they are blue 
like this one was, uh, or rather the one we have in our suit was when we took it out of the crate. That means it is fully charged. Uh, when it's green, it's um, it's got a high charge. When it's yellow like this one, it has a medium charge. When it is red, it's low. And when it's flashing red, um, it means you've got to change it out real quick, right? And when it's gray, it's dead. So, um, yeah, okay. So, um, what we need to do really first here is um, start looking at how to build these solar panels, right? So the first thing that we need to build is a uh, electronics printer here, right? Um, because that will allow us to um, build solar panels, right? Um, so what we need is 20 iron, 2 gold, and 10 copper, right? Um, so this brings us to mining, um, which we're going to do right now. Uh, so I'm going to hit the 6 key going to um, just drop this here um, and pull out my, my mining tool and go off and find some gold which I've been really lucky enough to um, uh, find right outside the base um, and just I have this uh, these wire cutters in my hand, so I'm just going to alt drag these and just place them on top of the tool belt and drop them inside it, right? Um, which is a, a handy thing to to know um, if you're trying to do a lot of um, a lot of things on the fly, right? So um, let's uh, drill in here and get this um, uh, this ore out of here. Um, so I, I think really what we're going to need is about 50 to 100 gold. Um, so what I might do here is just do uh, one big old session of mining uh, just to, to get the materials that we need uh, for what it is that we're going to do right now. Okay. So um, what you'll notice here is that there's uh, a, little, a little thing popping up right? that says like mine gold, mine gold. And so it is, it is always worth just eating into the, the, the bare rock, even if you can't see the ore, um, as we saw before, because sometimes uh, there, is, there is more hidden inside the, the rock. But in this case, it seems like that is not the case. Uh, so we're going to go over here and get this gold. Um, and uh, another thing about mining is that when you... When you do it, it's a good idea to have the jetpack on um, because you got to kind of think about mining as like sitting on a tree branch um, and then sawing the part that is closest to <laughs> the trunk, right? Um, you know, you're quite literally uh, mining the ground out from underneath yourself, right? So um, the jetpack will help you just kind of stay stable right while you're while you're doing this mining um so yeah um if, if you find a, a small node it is like i say it is always worth just um just exploring a little bit uh more than just what you can see uh because the the, the ore is hidden away quite often in uh, in the rocks there right um so okay i think that, you know i think that's going to be enough gold for for the time being we know this is here now, right? So I'm just going to mine this up to 50, uh, which is the. Let's, I'll tell you what. Let's like drag and drop. Okay, if that happens, just hit that, and it will uh, reset. So I'm just going to drag this gold out. It's only one. Uh, I'm just going to drag it out and drop it in there. It's not going anywhere, so you know that's okay. Um, and what we're going to do, since we are here, um, is we're just going to drop this gold into the arc furnace uh, turn it on first and then hit activate and then we're going to hope to all that is good that uh, this battery doesn't run out before uh, <laughs> the arc furnace is finished right so there's some gold smelting away there so now we need some iron um, and i'm going to mine quite a bit of iron here um, 
things that we're going to be doing relatively soon. Um, now this is an amazing, amazing map. I, I'm seeing a ton of gold. Um, I'm seeing a ton of stuff. Uh, it's really nice. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just like do the mining uh, and then cut the video here uh, just because it's. It's a little tedious, um, you know. It's it, mining is a chore, right? So I'm just gonna um, pause the video, and uh, I'll see you. Well, for you, it'll be uh, in a second. Right? So. <laughs> okay. So um, while we were mining. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which I did off screen, right? A number of things happened. Um, one, I realized that uh, the game sound was turned down, so um, we should now have uh, sounds during this recording. Um, hopefully, that's not something I'll forget for the next video. Um, uh, and also, what happened was um, I got hungry, right? And um, as I'm playing on Stationier difficulty level, which is the, the, the highest difficulty level. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really noticing a great deal of difference between that and the normal difficulty level, but um, one of the features of that difficulty level, which I'm sure they will um, uh, develop and uh, tweak as the, uh, as the game moves closer to, to final release, um, one of the features is that you have to open your helmet in order to eat food, right? Um, so on normal and easy difficulty level, you just put uh, the food in your hand, you know, hold down uh, the, the right mouse button and you eat the food, right? But in this case, uh, I'm going to have to open my helmet in order to uh, not die, right? Which sounds counterintuitive, but, you know, I'll, I'll show you right now how that works, right? Um, so I'm going to hit the one key to uh, bring up the uh, menu for my for my spells helmet. Um, I'm going to hold down the Alt key to activate the cursor, right? And you'll see here that the open mask um, uh, button there is in red, meaning you know that I can't uh, open my helmet, right? Because it is locked, right? Uh, so normally you would hit the I key to, to do that, right? So I'm going to spam the I key here and, and nothing is happening, right? So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just click on Open Mask. Uh, sorry, Unlock Mask, right? Um, and then you should see now the Open Mask um, uh, button is no longer red, right? So what I'm going to do now is before I open my helmet, Right, I'm going to hit the 5 key to bring up my uniform pockets, uh, which is weird, right? Because your uniform is under your spacesuit, you know, so you can still kind of get into your suit pockets, right? Um, <laughs> through your spacesuit, but you have to eat the food by opening your, your helmet, you know. But hey, we'll give them the, uh, the benefit of the doubt there because uh, this is a great game. It's, it's quite rare in, in my experience that uh, an early release game uh, makes it this far. Um, and with dev support and constant updates, um, you know, right, right when I found this game, uh, you know, almost a thousand hours play ago, um, it gave me a lot of confidence, right, that it was gonna, that it was gonna develop into um, uh, really quite, a, quite an interesting game. So, okay, here we are, right? I'm going to drag the uh, cereal bar here um, into my left hand. I'm going to hit the I key. I'm going to right hold down the right mouse button, eat my food, and then hit the I key again, uh, and hopefully not die, right? Um, so, yeah, it's going to take a little while here for my suit to build up the pressure, but you know, just just so that you're aware, right? You open your helmet, you don't immediately like you know turn inside out and implode and, and do all that funky stuff that um, uh, 
you do in a vacuum, right? Uh, so you know you do have that little bit of um, that little bit of space there, right? Um, now th the thing about locking the mask, right? Um, in previous versions of the game, that didn't exist. Or, I mean, it did, but it wasn't on by default, right? And what used to happen to me a lot was when I was turning on things like the, the welding torch, I used to hit I by accident and you know uh, open my helmet. And you know, if you have the sound turned down like I just did, right? And you hit I, then maybe you're not going to notice, and then you're suddenly like, "Why am I dying?" Right? So anyway, um, <laughs> good job, guys. Thanks for fixing that. Um, so okay, what else happened while I was uh, mining off screen was that I picked up a number of resources, right? So um, I picked up uh, like fifty. Um, copper which I, I want to go out and grab like a little bit more um, uh, and that I will do on screen because there's a couple of things I want to go through while I'm doing that uh, that I that I kind of forgot to do uh, when we went out last time um, and I picked up uh, some coal uh, which I'm, I'm just gonna um, what am I gonna do with that I am gonna pop that in here um, which we're gonna use to make uh, steel um, and you'll see why that is important um, shortly here right so I'm going to pick up that ingot that popped out of the uh, arc furnace there that we put in and just put it into the auto lathe um, my suit battery is low so I'm going to just turn that off um, in order to help this battery have a little bit more charge um, you know so that there's not so much power consumption uh, coming out um, so yeah we're gonna need to use the the coal and uh, three of these stacks of iron to make steel um, right uh, but to make the things that we're gonna need to make um, really right now like the most important resources that you, you need immediately are gold copper and iron to do what we're doing here, you probably need um, uh, roughly 200 to 250 iron. Um, you need some of this stuff called oxide. Um, and I couldn't find some, uh, um, some of this stuff called uh, volatiles, uh, which are pink. Um, actually, do you know what? Oh, there we go. There's some all the way over there. Right? So, um, one one thing before we before we go off on this this second mining venture here um, is that uh, your um, your bag when you start right has uh, this handheld tablet in it, right? Um, so I'm going to hit R to bring up the what is in your currently active hand uh, menu, right? way to put it um, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this tracker cartridge here this tracker uh, chip and put it inside the handheld tablet and just turn that on right um, and you see there that there's this this tracking beacon um, uh, which is however many <laughs> uh, meters away right and that's because it's not turned on right so uh, we're gonna go over here now and grab the tracking beacon um, and we're gonna just pop that down here um, and we're gonna go ahead and turn that on uh, and this will tell you um, how far away you are from where you dropped the tracking beacon right um, now it is portable so you could take it out to you know some amazing uh, gold mine that you found or whatever um, but just remember that it is battery powered, um, so you know that's a thing, right? Uh, you know, that's that's oh, there's lots of pink stuff over there, so let's go that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, if if you get lost, uh, you know, and, and you and you thought ahead and turned on the tracking beacon, and you have your uh, tablet in your bag, then you can find your way home. 
and pretty recently they added a compass to the game um, which is something that uh, since just before that patch uh, I haven't actually uh, played a full game so uh, as of this video I don't know how to use or even where to find the compass right so I'll probably do a little bit of research on that uh, before the next video um, and I'll go through what that is and how you use it um, right there and then. Uh, so, okay, let's go back to our mining tool here. Um, let's turn it on. Let's grab some of these volatiles. Um, now, when you're mining this stuff, you need um, roughly two to one um, for what, what we want to do immediately, which is make steel. Um, I'll explain why we're using this to make steel you know, in, a, in a moment. Um, but uh, basically, like you want to kind of have a two-to-one ratio of uh, volatiles to oxide, right? So two pink to one blue, right? Um, and you see, I'm, I'm lost, right? Uh, I mean, I can just about see the lights there in the distance, but um, you know, if I go behind a hill or whatever, you know, sometimes you, you, you do actually get lost right so <laughs> uh, watch out for that right um, so okay let's uh, let's just finish off this stack here of iron right um, and yeah so as as I was kind of saying before I decided to mine off screen um, mining uh, is a chore it's not quite so, um, uh, let's say, time intensive as uh, other games I've played. Um, you know, if you do enough ore mining all at once, uh, it doesn't take you that long as long as you can find the, the resources, right? Um, that can be an issue uh, sometimes. Uh, the, um, the, the resources haven't haven't spawned yet, um, I find, on, on some maps, right? So um, I don't know if that's uh, just bad luck or a mechanic or, or what, right? But like occasionally you'll, you'll end up on a map and you'll be going around looking for resources, you know, and then you'll come back to your base and suddenly there's like this big uh, clump of iron or copper or gold uh, next to your base and you're like, well, you know, <laughs> if I would have seen that before, then, you know, uh, <laughs> But anyway, okay, so um, so we have our volatiles, we have our oxide, um, we finished off that stack of iron. Um, now I, I really would like to find just one more uh, little node of copper here to um, uh, just to calm my OCD. Uh, for getting full stacks of things before I come back to, to base. But um, for now, I, I think what we want to do is, um, you know, uh, just just start uh, putting these these things in here. Uh, I'm not too happy with how I've managed my power here, right? I kind of forgot to, you know, um, come back and swap batteries and charge things and, and what have you. So, um, you know, I, I um, yeah, kind of made a, a little a little boo boo there. So okay, so we have at the back here. We should now have our uh, copper. So stick that in there. And then the reason I'm doing the the uh, iron last is because it is the quickest thing to smelt. Um, you'll, you'll see here if you mouse over the uh, activate button of the arc furnace, it tells you like what is. What is left to to process and as you can see you know um it's going down pretty quickly you know the copper takes a little bit longer and the gold um, is like watching you know a kettle uh, <laughs> um you know what's that saying right a watch pot never boils so so gold can get a little bit like that right so um we're waiting for that so let's go ahead and have a look in here in the uh, in the auto lathe uh, and hope that our power lasts. Um, and let's just bring up this electronic printer uh, one more time. Um, and we have um, 
20 iron is necessary for us to, to build that. And so, okay, so as you see, right, it just pooped out the iron. Uh, so now we're gonna uh, hit the go button and we're gonna build our electronics printer. And it takes a little while to, to build. Um, and while we're waiting for that to build, because we know that it Get is um, uh, <clears throat> the construction process for the uh, electronics printer is going to be the same as the auto lathe. So I'm going to go ahead and um, prepare for that by grabbing the two iron sheets that we needed for the well, let's grab the plastic sheets because we know we're going to need those and the iron sheets, which I must have put somewhere else. Um, oh dear. So, let's... Uh, where have I put... Oh, there they go. Alright, so they're here, right? So we know that we're going to need those um, when this electronics printer is done printing. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, that's how we're going to do this. So let's go ahead and turn this off and put um, the mining tool back into my uh, my belt there. Um, and I mean, if I had a little bit more power, I might feel more comfortable with um, Jetpack. Um, putting more stuff into the auto lathe but um like i said right i made a kind of a boo boo so i'm going to just take these small batteries here um, i think they're in the starter crates um because some of the tools in your tool belt um use uh, batteries right like the the screwdriver that we used to deconstruct things um and the the angle grinder um use uh, batteries as well. So I, I think that's why these are in there, right? So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these in. Now they won't last that long um, because they're small batteries, uh, but they will last uh, probably a little longer than the 6% remaining on, on this battery here. Um, I really want the sun to come up. That would be really nice. Um, so, oh, and we finished with the uh, the electronics printer here so let's just drop this battery with the Q right just tap Q remember don't hold it down otherwise you'll throw it uh, really far away and that's not good so um, now this here is the output for the auto lathe right this is where it spits out things that you um, that you um, uh, build so um, now, much the same way that we put or uh, sorry ingots into this input here, um, if you put uh, a manufacturing uh, machine uh, too close to the, or rather the input of a manufacturing machine too close to the output of another one, what will happen is the machine will spit out uh, what it makes into the input of the next machine. So in order to avoid that, we're going to put it perpendicular, um, which is kind of convenient because uh, that means we can have the um, power cable kind of come around past it. And, um, I don't really mind too much where I put the things right now because uh, we're probably going to um, do something else with, with this area. Um, in a, in a few episodes time but um, you know for right now uh, that's what we're gonna do so the first thing again with this is let me uh, just drop this by the power controller um, swap my mining belt for my tool belt with alt drag right uh, left alt drag and uh, hit six again to open that belt and use the mouse wheel to scroll through and find my welding tool Turn that on, and then alt drag my iron sheets into my left hand. Uh, press E to switch again, and then let's construct that. Right. So um, let's put that away, and then we're gonna put these cables in here, and then we'll go back to the welder, and then we are gonna swap 
these iron sheets for these plastic sheets. Stroke that. Um, no, I don't want those cables. I want the screwdriver to finish construction. Um, and now I want the cables because I have to connect it up to this uh, power network, right? So let's put these back in our bag and grab our wire cutters because remember we need to lay down uh, uh, an extra cable here, right, to um, go over to this electronics panel. So with our wire cutters in our hand, right, remember we can now build here so we can like append right to to uh, what we've already built, right? And remember C to uh, snap to um, the connections, right? And so in theory now, yes, okay, there we go. Um, and with this on, um, we can now see what we need to build um, a solar panel, right? So we're going to go all the way down here. You can use the, the scroll bar. It's, it's a menu, right? So you can use the, the mouse wheel or, or the scroll bar. Here, right? So um, solar panel, right? Uh, we need 10 iron, 5 gold, and 20 copper, right? Um, and so the, the sun is coming up here. Um, so I wonder if it's worth risking just, um, just putting in this battery from our suit, dragging this battery here. Um, these are other things you can do, right? You can like pick up uh, batteries and things and, and so on. So um, we're just going to risk that. Um, you'll see that because it's a small battery in my suit, it's the suit is using quite a lot of power there, right? So this is not going to last forever. Um, so in the auto lathe, we have some materials. We already have 30 iron, 48 gold, and 40 copper, right? So uh, we're going to pull this lever. And while the machine is off, uh, this lever does nothing, right? But when you turn it on, uh, the materials kind of come out of it, right? So you know whatever you have inside the auto lathe will spill out onto the floor next to it. Um, and then we can use the same resources that we had in the um, auto lathe or the electronics printer. Um, and that way we can pick this battery up and uh, the thing here that has less charge than this one. And this one Power low. Um, okay, so let's drop that. Um, so we need the solar panel, right? And I, and I think now we have enough materials to build, uh, well, two, so that's cool. Um, and did we have more, more copper? I, I think that's why I wanted more copper, right? Uh, yeah. So we need like 20 more copper for what it is that we want to do, right? Which is put three um, adjustable solar panels on these three blocks here, right? So there's one, two. Um, now these solar panels, as you'll see, um, are a little bit more complex than the basic solar panel. So they have on the left there, they have a, a, a data input output um, or a data port, and then they have a power connector, right? Uh, so you can use the mouse wheel to change that that there is, is a power and data connection um, but I prefer to do it like this for reasons that you will see uh, later um, so again with the solar panels um, we need to have um, a cable connecting them to whatever is the power grid now I'm using a junction here because I know that I am going to build one here uh, one here here and you know because I may want to um, attach something else here like uh, yeah so I'm just gonna put a junction there as well um, so all right so let's just connect up these cables um, to the um, drop down this solar panel as well uh, let's just connect these up 
to um, this uh, grid here, right? So let's grab that um, tool bell. Let's grab the wire cutters. And again, let's just connect uh, these cables here, right? And yeah, so these solar panels, once again, are uh, at the moment utterly useless because they don't have the glass sheets uh, on them. So we'll just run over here quick and, and grab those. So what do we draw in there? The cables, right? So um, we'll grab this and we will start uh, generating awful lot more solar power now um, because these cape these uh, these panels um, as you will see in a moment can be adjusted um, right so um, we'll see which way they need to be adjusted in a, in a moment um, but yeah okay so the next thing we need to go ahead and do is find that more copper, right, that I was talking about. Um, well, do you know what, to be honest, uh, I think we'll be fine here with just these three solar panels. So let's, um, let's figure out uh, the steel um, conundrum here, right? So, okay, we need steel because having these solar panels uh, feed into this battery is great and all. Um, but if we want to construct, you know, a, a more complex base uh, and have um, power during the night when these solar panels are not receiving any uh, energy from the sun, then what we need to do is build ourselves a battery, right? And I'm not talking like a battery here, like a, um, like a battery cell, right? What I'm talking about is um, a big... industrial battery right so that is down here in the kits section of the menu um, and what we need for that is uh, 38 gold that we have um, we need that 20 copper right so, um, so we'll have to go ahead and do that um, but we also need 20 uh, steel right so uh, we need 20 units of steel and the way to make steel is with the furnace, right? Uh, not the arc furnace, but the furnace, uh, which is you know, essentially a, a, um, a more complex way to uh, convert ore into resources. But with steel, this time it's an alloy, right? It's not just a straight ingot of, uh, of a raw material, right? So, um, I think with that what we're going to do is call it for this video um, and I think we'll go over the um, the furnace and the battery in uh, episode 2 okay so you know if you like the video um, hit the like button right uh, <laughs> and uh, feel free to comment you know as long as you're constructive criticism or, or, or you know, um, uh, you're going to be polite you know you don't have to be nice but polite is good right um, and um, you know if you like subscribing subscribe um, but other than that uh, thanks for watching and have a have a great day okay so it's a little tea out